Kia ora, hello and welcome to our viewers across New Zealand and Australia. I'm Philip Duncan, thank you for joining us. We've got snow on the way for both Australia and New Zealand, but in saying that, a lot of windy, sort of milder weather coming in as well. Let's take a look at the animated wind map. Today we're put on the air pressure, which you can see low pressure in the darker colouring, high pressure in the bright whites. So we've got another low pressure system coming in. It's coming into the southeastern corner of Australia to begin with, and then it moves over into the South Island of New Zealand. In fact, both islands get it, but the South Island is just a little bit more exposed. And then way over in Perth, there's another low forming, and that's also going to bring in some severe weather, or at least some rough weather along the southern coastline and maybe even into central Australia. Let's try and make some sense of it all on Wednesday. So there is that low near Perth getting deeper and stronger, pushing up against the high, so very windy conditions in between that. But also on the other side of the high, a windy southerly coming up, so Sydney's got a temperature drop. On the New Zealand side, warm nor'westers, you can see it's all sort of going around each other, but in come the warm nor'westers. So tonight, right across New Zealand, you've either got normal temperatures for this time of the year or it is a few to several degrees above normal as those milder winds come through and the rain clouds and that's what we see later on Wednesday, rain clouds coming back into the areas that have been flooded. Rainfall wise, this is the 24 hour rain map for Wednesday and it shows uh, some heavier falls back into the areas that have had flooding. Here's the good news. We've got two bits of good news. One, the actual rainfall totals in there are only getting up around 50 or 60 millimetres. So if a rain warning's issued, that's right at the lower end of it. The other bit of good news is, unlike uh, Friday, Saturday that's just been, and all that rain that accumulated, remember the... Uh, 733 millimetres in the mountains here, uh, and there was you know, 400 millimetres east of Westport. We're not seeing those totals inland. That rain's not penetrating as far in, which means the rivers and the valleys further upstream don't have as much water coming in. However, with the rain that's just been, more slips are possible and rivers may flood a little bit faster or rise a little bit faster as a result of the saturation that's going on there. So I think the main risk is probably in the form of a few slips. And up here also some heavier downpours, maybe 70 millimetres coming for you, but almost nothing coming for central southern parts of Hawke's Bay. Let's carry on. We've got snow as well in the forecast. The two-day snow forecast starting from Wednesday shows what we were talking about yesterday, that this is mostly up in the mountains and ranges, about 25 centimetres coming for the peak, so that's nothing too extreme. And a couple of snow flurries just making it in to the North Island as well over the next two days. Let's move through to Thursday. So on Thursday, it starts off wet in many parts of New Zealand. You can see that rain sticking around the areas that have been flooded. But as the day goes on, it does start to clear up. Meanwhile, the low that's come out of Perth is producing severe weather right up to Alice Springs. Take a look at this wind map. Not very often that you get gale force winds up in Alice Springs, but that's what they've got here in the shading, showing some very windy weather as that low slowly moves across, actually heading slowly towards New Zealand. But it does fall apart, so it's not coming in as a direct storm. Most systems that form around southern parts of Australia, they sort of get pulled down, because remember, the Earth is a globe, <laughs> and this map's flat, but the Earth curves around like that. So a lot of systems that look as though they're coming straight into New Zealand start to curve and disappear off because they're going around the poles. But as you can see, we've got pretty settled weather as we go in towards the end of this week on Friday. Not too bad. We've got some wet weather though over towards Australia and a bit of wet weather just lingering around the eastern side of New Zealand. As we go into the weekend, high pressure dominates New Zealand. So Saturday, a colder start fairly pleasant day on the way, it's not going to be that bad. There might be an isolated shower up around the Coromandel Peninsula, Fiordland, maybe Great Barrier Island a bit later on, but nothing much in there. But you can see what's building up behind it. There's a lot of windy weather coming through here. Um, and some colder weather for Australia. You've got some snow. Here's your two-day snow forecast for this weekend. The areas in darker shading here could be seeing 40 centimetres, maybe even half a metre of snow coming through and right up into the ranges west of Sydney. Um, as we get into Sunday, that cold blast goes up over the Australian side, wintry kind of weather. But in New Zealand, warm northerlies rising to gale force in some places and warming up. You know, it's, I know it's the middle of winter, but this does look a little bit like a spring weather pattern with the windy westerly starting to dominate. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I know I, I do that most years. 
But to be honest, most years we find winter starts to fade away at the very start of August to the very end of July. Um, at least in the sense of being cold day after day after day. We're seeing a bit more mixture here with northerlies coming through. So as you can see on Sunday, the weather goes downhill in Sydney and is starting to go downhill in New Zealand. That's all from me. For more details, please go to ruralweather.co.nz and weatherwatch.co.nz. Also download our free app, Weather Watch. Easy as that. We'll see you tomorrow.